a Hive Ultimate, a group of players and coaches from all over the world working together to progress the next generation of Ultimate strategy. We've helped top teams win world championships and new teams introduce the sport in a fun and inclusive way. Search for Hive Ultimate on YouTube to learn more about our cutting edge strategies and to see analysis of world-class teams. To find out what Hive can do for your team, head over to our Patreon page where you can gain access to our exclusive drills and session plans and to join our worldwide community of coaches. Get ahead of the curve with Hive Ultimate. Enjoying the show? Show your support for the live stream and the people making the show. Buy a super chat or super sticker on YouTube directly. Select your donation and type your message to the world and share. All donations go into directly funding new shows. Buy a super sticker or super chat now. Thank you. Real quick sprints, take the disc briskly, sunshine glints off my frisbee, crisply knows how it goes with the sand between our toes. We got both of the pivots and all of the throws. Got to hold the disc and move it at the right time. When you flick your wrist and you're feeling sublime, compose your throws, not discuss fluttery tricks from the brick and your biscuits buttery. Feel the spirit, stretch every sinew, stream in courage, yeah, we continue. Take my hand, yeah, come with me from the disc to the sand, to the beach, to the sea. There's magic in the air. All you have to do is catch it. EBUCC 2022. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to EBUCC, the European Beach Ultimate Club Championships. And we are now in bracket play in the mixed division. And we've got a quarterfinal for you now. Jogo Benito from Berlin, Germany, as you could of it evidently tell by the very German name up against Friesgo from Blois in France and it's Benji Reese and Hannah Pendlebury in the booth the all-white of Jogo Benito beginning the game on offense yeah and it is a delight to be in bracket play things starting to hot up on the sand but of course slightly breezier day than yesterday crosswind across these pitches Far to near side as our camera views has it and slightly diagonally right to left. So opponents, not just the players running around on the sand, but also the elements. But Jogo Benito shooting downwind on offense. On the sideline there is Phil Kay. Looking for an option. He's going for the hammer over the top, but us asked too much of the intended target for that one. Uh, Lena von Stebert. Von Stupp, a very speedy player indeed, but unable to uh, catch that, that, should we say adventurous hammer? Uh, optimistic, is that a bit harsh? No. Ambitious. I like the idea, I do, but uh, not quite the execution yeah, I think he wanted. Certainly left a little to be desired. Frisco begin with a reset back to Ruel. Pass the bidding defender into the hands now of Clément Priou. That one is launched downfield, roasting deep for the score. That'll put Frisco in the lead with a break on the game's first point. Bukahi Pala there running down with acres of room given. The student, been playing for just shy of 10 years. But Good stuff and a nice opener for Frisco. They'll be delighted to be up a break against Yogo Benito, who have a pedigree of beach experience and unusual uniforms comparative to uh, other teams we see out here on the pitches. So, how is your uh, how's your Portuguese? Not great, but why do you ask? Well, do you know what Jogo Benito means? Oh, the beautiful game. It is the beautiful game. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. I thought you were going to get me to pronounce things. It's it's very similar to Spanish as Portuguese. In fact, I believe that generally Spanish and Portuguese speakers can largely understand each other when they speak their native tongues in a conversation. But uh, the pronunciations are a little bit different. So instead of leche, it's leite, I believe. Or leche. Gurner in the backfield, downfield. To give it. looking, isolating the resets. And now here's Gurner downfield. Little dish off there to Gaffney, fakes the flick and back into Gurner's grasp. Now here's Chesky, of course. 
the Italian standout. Yeah, she's not really a big fan of playing on beach. Much rather be laying on it with some sort of cocktail in hand, she says. Gaffney. Again looking for options. Centers to Gurner. Rock solid at the back. Breaking around with the backhand. And it's the first time we've called Bussoff's name all points. But getting the job done, catching in the end zone for one apiece. Yeah, Vladislav Bussoff with his first stat of the game. Very talented player, of course. And been playing for eight years. Currently living in Berlin, but originally from Moscow. Yeah, was on the Midnight Cobras slide that made it all the way to the final in the mixed division at the last EBUCC four whole years ago. But currently playing his ultimate for Wall City of Berlin, who had a very fun time and hosted an excellent party at Gaurle in Venice, the European Ultimate Club Championships on grass, but a few weeks ago. So one apiece. We're going to see the first freeze go O-line of the game. One of the things that you find with uh, with the rostering rules for this tournament, teams have to have a minimum of 10 players, but a maximum of only 16, is that players, they get a lot of pitch time and uh, yeah, have, having that fitness is crucial. Well, Friesgo definitely do look very athletic out here on the sand, a bit of a hesitation initially. That's a nice inside break. And there's the deep shot over the top, tracking it down in the end zone superbly. Freeze go, ex or reopen, I should say, their advantage at 2 1. And a nice clean hold to do it off the big shot. We saw in the previous game Tequila Boom Boom of Rimini taking on quite a lot of adventurous ones towards the end zone. And it worked off, I have to say, really well for them. We'll see it again now on the replay. Just that deep put from Cruel is bang on the money and Bertrand tracks it down into the end zone, holds the disc off it in celebration. 2-1 to the French. Jogo Benito finished top of their pool, also went straight to the quarterfinals, but a slightly trickier route for Frisco. Had to uh, had to play a really tough pre-quarterfinal against Urebro, where they were 12-10 down and came all the way back to win on Universe 13-12. Oh, wow. Well, to be fair, that's not the worst deficit in the world to come overcome, especially on beach, where really anything can happen in these short format games, just 45 minutes long. But of course, many well, quarterfinals now being played in this mixed division after a very long stage in the pools. Gaffney brings the disc in from the brick mark after that pool landed comfortably out of bounds. Kay maybe gets a little bit of a bump on the mark there from Tresta. Disc is checked back in. Swung around to Gurner, who goes to Grant to make sure that she secures the catch. Just a little signature on the end of that one. Offhand, backhand, leads K, little short dish to Gurner. Thought about forcing it in there, but off balance, thought better of it. Gaffney, nice little high release lefty to Gurner, popping it into Basov at the front of the end zone. Here's Anjogo's second goal. We're tied at twos. Well, trading down it, the German, well, to be fair, not just purely German outfit in their dashing white polos. Got a little bit of international flavor around, of course, we already mentioned the Italian Treschki. But always so stylish. They have an excellent Instagram presence if you're into that kind of thing. And they have lots of casual wear. You see them out at these, as well as the championships also lots of fun tournaments so there's uh, a lot a lot of world games ger team germany players are hugo benito individuals which i may have been uh, told off for saying too many times but it is relevant those connections can be honed on national teams as well as on fun teams and this is the beauty of the club divisions of course you can have some guests appearing here in these rosters 
generally speaking, you have to be true club. And a foul call on the mark. So back in play here, a freeze go. Little short pop there. Gomez goes up line but doesn't get it instead. Swung into the backfield. Freeze go. Firing that little inside channel through to Ruel. Ruel's going to put this one and that motors high and through the end zone for the turn. First turnover of the game from the French. Yep, Simon Ruel, who's been pretty good at the opening few points, now throwing his first turnover of the game. Perhaps one of those high risk, high reward type individuals that we love to see on these live streams. Keeping things interesting. So this will be walked to the front of the end zone with Jogo Benito looking for the break to bring us back on serve. Three colours downfield, starting a decent way away and bobbled. But Von Stebert makes the catch, squeezing that one up line to Greenwalls. Centres and dished off from Herkins. On the near side now with Flora Scala. Flora Scala goes back to Paul Herkins, or business as he's more commonly known. Von Stebert. Resetting to Greenwald. They're poaching off the hands a little bit and Jogo Benito seem happy to utilize that, but Greenwald's left all alone. Scala comes through and collects the disc and then they zing that one down the sideline into Lena Von Stebert and we are back on serve at 3-2. Yeah, Lena Von Stebert there. Having played with Jinx, of course, taking that German national title, but falling foul of their fellow national representation of Seagulls in Kaorle a couple of weeks ago. Reels that one in that was sort of fired, almost like trying to take the skin off of her hands. It's not the way you want to exfoliate. Wouldn't be my preferred method, I don't think. Here's a replay of that scoring shot just fired and zipped down the sideline from Scala. And so the break back for Yogo Benito. Jogo Benito. Oh, sorry, Jogo Benito. I'll take your correction. Yeah, in Portuguese you tend to you tend to pronounce the J's that you that you drop in in Spanish. Jogo Benito. There we go. What we just saw on the back of that end zone a little uh, medic quad en route to somewhere else around this field with a member of our wonderful volunteer medical team. Yeah, hopefully nothing too serious. Indeed, but excellent facilities all around this complex for the championships. Olivier with a high release backhand. The layout doesn't get there. So another break opportunity now. Jevic. Swings to Gurner, Gurner around. Oh, a cheeky little off hand backhand. Punches it into Phil K. And Jogo Benito seem to have found their rhythm now, 4-2. I've noticed something about these rosters, Benji. And that is the general shortness of them, but also the fact that Frisco only have four women. To be fair, Jogo Benito have five, but there's not a lot of legs on either of these teams, especially in terms of the female matching players. So that might be an advantage having that extra pair on Jogo Benito, comparative to their uh, French adversaries. But it does seem to be the women on Jogo Benito doing a lot of the leg work at the moment. And when you consider how good they are, you kind of you get that. You see they're just casual, the offhand backhand from Chesky for the score makes that look a lot easier than it is. I give that a difficulty execution rating of at least an 8 out of 10, especially with the flustery wind behind. It has certainly picked up from this morning. It was a super calm beginning to the day. And right now, yeah, about 11 or 12 kilometer an hour wind. Temperature just, just 23 degrees versus yesterday's high of 25.
High release backhand there, into the center of the pitch. And there's the deep shot, air underneath it. Gomez will try and chase it towards the sideline, but the sideline's gonna win that one and win it comfortably. Looks frustrated, and I get it, because there wasn't a lot he could do. In play with Greenwald wearing those distinctive shades. That's a high grab made really well by Herkins. Back to business as he finds Greenwald. Greenwald floating this one, inviting pressure, but brilliantly caught by Flora Scala. Wow, what a snatch that is. Absolutely roof. Flora Scala grabs all the ceramic tiles in the vicinity and puts them together to ladder herself up to grab that one. Yeah, Austrian, but uh, now living in Berlin and uh, making her impact felt here for Jogo Benito. Tell you what, when you can roof people like that, it really is a beautiful game. This is... Uh, Greenwald giving Scala a chance to get her name up in lights. And I think it's safe to say that she did that. Well, another break to add to the tally. Reeled in fantastically after a, uh, yeah, a choice throw from Greenwald. That's four on the bounce now for Jogo Benito. Well, we may well yeah, see this rather jazzy look with the matching white shorts and polos just cruise their way. It, it feels like they could be actually, you know, staff from a cruise ship with that look. It's a very It's a good that I see that. Yes, yeah. Holiday Campo Yogo Benito. Oh, that one, huge pressure. Gurner comes right through the back there. I think she tried to pull out at least I hope she tried to pull out, but ended up almost going through a flying crossbody. Yeah, it is difficult to retain your balance on sand when you're trying to move in the opposite direction from all of your momentum. Here's the deep shot. Two players deep and neither of them are going to catch up to it. And Anna Gurner, I think, will be pretty happy with that. Yeah, that was definitely the yards available in terms of the separation between the two players, but... A little stumble on the rundown. So Jogo Benito again looking to extend their advantage. Grunewald to Kay. Okay, to Gurner, rising, but she snatches it expertly. Squeezes that one into the middle, where Bassoff. Now, to Kay. Kay blading to the end zone, cool as you like. Bassoff gets buckets, his third goal of the game, and it's 6-2 now for Berlin. Really starting to just expand their lead, open up the door and run through it at full pace. Our Yoga Benito showing a lot of class. Yeah, they are, I think. I mean, you, can, you look at the roster and you see the quality that they have. They have been pushed at times. They've not necessarily had it their own way all the way through this tournament, but so far they've been able to grind out tight results if they need to. And that is a important skill. <laughs> Indeed, you have to be able to, to do that if you're going to see yourself advance in these championships. But as the players on the field take a brief time out, some repose, so shall we. We'll see you after these messages.
Welcome back to the European Beach Ultimate Club Championships here from the Praia da Rocha, Portimao, Portugal. Mixed quarter-final action with Jogo Benito of Berlin up against Frisco from Blois in France. And so far, the Germans, after a, a slightly shaky start, got broken on the first point, have been faultless and flawless ever since. Yeah, it's almost like they were toying with Frisco, being like, oh, well, yeah, you can have the first one, and then just, no. They've clamped down big time. A round break to Olivier on the far side. Ryu. Just resetting into the backfield. Looking for an option, finding one. Yeah, there is some poaching going on, but the frantic clustering and everyone trying to move at once for Frisco isn't really allowing them to exploit those. Greenwald sees the opportunity to try and bid underneath, doesn't get there, but that reset pass just flutters to the turf. Greenwald picks up quickly. The sand turf? You know what I meant. No, I'm just picturing sand turf and I'm really liking that visual image. You mean like really old school Astro? Oh, sandy Astro. <laughs> Friction burns everywhere. Do not miss that. Bassoff. Finds Greenwald. Back to Bassoff. One on one in the end zone if he wants it. Not on this occasion. Instead, just going to holster for a split second longer and eventually finding the option. A 7 2 half time lead for Jogo Benito that they have thoroughly deserved. They have looked the better, but it really is the chaos that they're causing on defense that is just unsettled the heck out of Frisco. But of course, no formal stoppage at time half and these, well not time half, the, the half time even. We knew what you meant. Yeah, yeah. well, because there could be a timed half. A there timed isn't. half time, not on this occasion, no. There isn't in this, this format, but... Uh, yeah, half time of these 45 minute long games, but at the moment we might see this one close in record time. I do wonder what the longest game we've had so far on the stream pitches has been, Benji. I feel like we've not quite overrun yet, but we've come close on a couple of occasions. But certainly 21 minutes expired and 7 2, the faith better. Undefeated. Uh, they were in the pool of five rather than six teams, Jogo Benito. Began yesterday morning with a 13-10 win over Kus Padova and then 13-7 over uh, Panic from the Netherlands. Does that mean that Jogo Benito, Jogo Benito have also had one fewer game than their opponents? Uh, n two fewer games now because uh, Frisco played a pre-quarter final as well. It's really brutal, this format, in those teams trying to play up in the championship bracket. We saw it when we saw Yaka playing against Tequila Boom Boom, who'd played two games versus Yaka's four. That one sneaks it past Gurner, and I really thought that was going to be popped into the end zone, but choosing just to be a bit more reticent with it on this occasion. Gets the reset off. Now want to flow it towards the end zone. Faking the back flick, sorry, going into the backfield to Trestan and the offhand backhand is class personified. Finding the receiver for the score, their first since it was 2-1 in their favour. Six on the bounce, Jogo Benito were able to get before Frisco returned to the scoreboard. And it's lovely to see them returning, of course, punching that one in. Nice little juke turn at the end for getting away from the defence. With uh, just finishing up that thought on Jogo Benito, yeah, yesterday evening, a tight 12-11 win over Jolly Rogers, which they were really pushed, but then finished their pool this morning with a 13-6 win over Element and winning the pool goes straight into the quarterfinals. Whereas for Frisco, struggled maybe their first game yesterday against Guayota, went down 11-8, but undefeated since that point, beating Fug CH, uh, peer pressure, zombies, and Foy in the pool. And then, as we mentioned, that 13-12 come from behind win over Orebro in the pre-quarters. So perhaps having spent a lot more of their energy than they'd have liked to in their pre-quarter final, lacking perhaps against this German club. But it was a bizarre pool because if the... Uh, if Yogo Benito, Jogo Benito went against Jolly Rogers to sudden death, there was a sudden death finish between Jolly Rogers and Element, the first game of the tournament. Yeah, it feels like there is a lot of parity 
across the division. But at the moment, Jogo Benito aren't showing that on this occasion because they are taking Frisco to task. And again, they're in the red zone. Gurner to the end zone for the score. Another layout successfully reeled in by Jogo Benito. And another jinx connection. Yes, yeah, Scarlett again on the receiving end. They are, I'll tell you what, their ultimate's almost as clean as the jerseys. Well, it's interesting because there are some, but there's a range of short options. Yes, so I think it's just been, they've just been told to bring white shorts. Indeed. And we've got a little bit of a base layer game poking out. I personally quite enjoy playing Beach Ultimate in full leg compression. Not necessarily to compress for making me any faster, which is a challenge and a half, but actually just to keep the sand off of any sort of sweaty legs that might occur. It just means when you go home, there's a little bit less to shower off. Because even just sitting up here on our commentary penthouse. Oh no, I've got I've got sand everywhere. I just sand everywhere. I've just accepted it at this point. It's my fate. <laughs> well, we're bringing plenty back to the UK with us. We we have we both live on the coast, so we are familiar with sand, but just not quite this much of it. That's what that Metallica song's really about. It's not about you know the devil or anything. No, it's about us coming back from the beach. <laughs> Exit life in the outside world. Enter nighttime in your shower and watch all of that silicon, well, future silicon granules that could be turned into silicon. Just go down your plug hole. Squeezing that one down the sideline here. Bertrand resetting into the backfield. Cruel. Yeah, in contrast to what other teams have been trying to do, there seems to be a force out kind of affair for the defense of Diogo Benito. Grunewald wants to put the pressure on, but throwing through the middle is always risky because there's traffic there and it leads to the turn. Herkins bangs the disc. So he's put some sunglasses on. And he is ripping this one for bus off, but not going to be able to get there. Nope. That's the first turnover for Jogo Benito since the first point. I think in order to... Uh have caught that disc, you'd have to be about three times the size just for the pure stride length to make up the ground. But Freeze Go really need to punch this one in, do a little bit of trading against their German opponents. Ruel. Underneath block there from Harkins. I like that. Doing that business again. That was very good. I might not sound excited, but in my heart, I'm very, very excited. Have I explained to you the business thing before? Nope. So there were two pools who, uh, as there's a timeout there, came up through kind of Berlin and the German Youth Ultimate at the same time. Uh, Paul Harkins and Paul... Is the other one called Pleasure? No, he's called Party. So not far <laughs> off. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll Google this because it's now annoying me that I can't remember. Well, that's okay. I say Google go. this, obviously I'm not going to actually Google it. I'm going to metaphorically Google it. I'm going to look it up. But, uh, so no, Paul Harkins saying, well, I mean, he clearly... Paul Rickerts, that's the one. Clearly has a lot of tricks in his briefcase regardless. Well, that's part of the reason why they called why they call him business, because he was kind of a bit more straight-laced maybe than, than party. And yes, he did used to bring a briefcase, so... Uh, business became his nickname oh that's cute it's like the kid at school that used to have the backpack with wheels that he used to what you did you never have any kids that, that you know the adv advent of putting wheels and handles onto backpacks and when they became no. too heavy yeah we had a couple of kids in our school growing up that had backpacks with wheels i mean shout out to the nerds with backpack wheels no but people people when i was at school people used to have those uh those kind of rucksacks that look like they never fit anything in. And the tiny ones. Yeah, and I'm the like, what's, put a teddy bear in and nothing else. what's even the point of them? It's because they're stylish. It's the idea of, no, I have people to carry the things for me, Benji. But um, but Paul Hagen said to give a shout out to his beautiful mother. Aww. So we will do. Hello, Gilla Hawkins. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm sure you are. So watch your lovely son throw himself around on these sandy, sandy fields. Except they're not fields. Fields, they're pitches. pitches. But uh, he's played in every single youth division in Germany. Fun facts. 
But we liked finding out about um, Wall City, which of course many of these Jogo Benito players play for, that they do indeed have a bit of a business party element going on. Yeah, I've heard, I have heard actually on the grapevine that Berlin is going to be good this year. It's been, it's been said before, so, uh, you know. But they have some players who are sort of, you know, they lose their cleats, they're never on time, and that's sort of the party division. They always yes, have they, uh, I was told that they, had a, they have an official name within the group that does not translate uh, in a safer work manner. No. <laughs> we'll, call also, them, we'll call them the birds. They also have a team DJ, which is fantastic. But, uh, yeah, Herkins actually was a bit of a later addition to the Jogo squad. Got the invitation at DV, DFV Port... Pokal, sorry, in 2018 when Christian Hurt is new. Well, obviously that a few years ago and uh, Gaffney now back to full fitness as that looks like a push-off foul, I think. For Maybe sure. called against Talor Grunwald. Yeah, we've seen a couple of those today. None yesterday, but uh, players perhaps feeling a little bit of uh, fatigue out here as the sand starts to really start to sap at their energy. but just uh, about 15 minutes to go before the hard cap is applied. So Jogo hoping to sit on their cushiony, feather-filled lead of five points. Can they make it six? Inside break there. Von Stept. Trying to reset that one back, and that is ripped away by Simon Ruel. It was all over that one like a rash. Ooh la la, that was very nice. So opportunity for Frisco to maybe grind out the hole that they didn't think was going to come. Love the flare on that high release flick to Ruel. Can he think about squeezing that one through or blading it over the top? It's just going to swing across. High release backhand almost dismissively thrown there into the end zone for Frisco to score an 8-4. Well, that point took forever, it felt like, Benji. Obviously, we did have a timeout in between. We got to talk about lovely Paul Herkins, business. But... Uh, it was business time for a, for a little while. Well, interestingly, there are no business socks on any of the players on the field. We've seen a number of different sort of, you know... Sorry, business socks. As in sand socks. Oh, right, I see. Playing on the socks, of course, the famous song Business Time by Flight of the Concours. You know, when I'm down to my socks, you know it's time for business. That's why they're called business socks. But business, no, uh, no sand socks out here on either team, which is oftentimes something you'll do if you've got taping, if you're, you know, strapped up an ankle maybe to play this season ender. I think one of the advantages of playing it, you know, in the middle of October is the sand's not quite as hot as it would be in the height of summer. So, uh, yeah, in previous editions of the World Beach Championships, you've certainly seen sand socks be very prevalent because it's, it's just too hot to be on the sand without them. And of course, on some sandy beaches that are maybe more granular beaches, they have gritty, gritty surfaces. They actually provide you with just normal socks as a one, once only use. Because if you wear proper sand socks that cost, you know, proper money for neoprene type things, it can ruin them. There's a beautiful high release backhand there from Gaffney. Finds his Wall City and Jogo Benito teammate, Phil K for the score. Beautiful yep. throw, that one. And considering how long it took for that last point, that was a slick and easy hold for Jogo Benito. And they'll be looking to do more of the same on the opportunities that they might get off a of freeze go. But they've been playing some fiery defense. I think the French still very much want this game. I mean, you have to. It's a quarter final. You'd be remiss to not try. I think I, I think I agree with that. It'd be strange to come to a tournament and then decide, right, we've made the bracket, that's it, everyone go home. Oh, I don't know, I've seen stranger things happen. Yeah, actually, to be fair, so have I. And I think, if, in fact, Benji, if I recall correctly, isn't that exactly what we did at Resolution last year? I don't, I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> we we definitely didn't go home. We definitely played the games. Yeah. We're a bit like, you know what? This doesn't really matter. We've made top four. Let's just have fun. <laughs> you get the beers in. Exactly. Actually, a beach time beer wouldn't go, wouldn't go amiss right about now. 
Well, of course, we are all business here. Here's Frisco back on offense. Cruel. Dumping off to Lacoste Lefebvre. Now there's the deep shot down that far sideline. Oh, the showboating from Simon Cruel. Stop it. <laughs> oh, stop. But this is more the free go, free go we expected to see. I don't know what happened to them in the first half. They just seem to just be shooting themselves in the feet and bleeding all over the sand. That and that's a bit of a party foul, to be honest. That certainly is. The six-point unanswered run from Jogo Benito to expand that scoreline to 7-2 going into halftime. Yeah, we've traded since then, but you do feel that Kind of that onslaught from Jogo Benito that they were uh, unable to stop. Probably might have sunk their chances. Well, if they can continue to execute their own offense, Jogo Benito will sail through like indeed a boating crew. We said that they look like they might be from a holiday camp, but they could also be uh, outfitted to be, you know, hosts of some super yacht. Perhaps that's more appropriate. Feels maybe, yeah, as you say, more thematically on song. Gurner coming underneath. Just a little pop there to Gaffney. Well, they're certainly all hard workers under this hot Portuguese sun. Swinging now towards the far sideline. Still count rising, blading it into the end zone. It's a floater. That's not a problem for Greenwald. Boxing out and bringing it down. 10-5. Oh, we talked about Flora Scala absolutely roofing. My goodness, Hartley Greenwald. That was just a textbook display of how to use your entire body to safely sit yourself underneath the disc and give zero opportunity for anybody to pick it off over the top. Off a slightly risky biscuit, can we say that? I think that's, I think, I think I'd say that biscuit had a bit of risk about it. Danger cooking with Chef Bonito. I mean, on the one hand, I'm intrigued. On the other hand, it seems risk does seem as seems like maybe not the best idea. I don't know what qualifies as danger cooking. <laughs> but anything when I'm in the kitchen, I guess, probably does. Depends what kind of danger you're looking for. There's a lot of danger, to be fair, involved with the cooking process. A lot of chopping, sharp objects. The chance to have some food poisoning action going on. Cooking with gas comes to mind. Explosions. Fire. Or just some ceviche. But then that's got some acid to it. So, you know, there's all sorts of things going on in the kitchen. But right now, it might be freeze goes who've got a recipe for disaster on their hands if they can't put together this offense it's flowing nicely at the moment though yeah we'll see what other ideas they can cook up to try and get this game back in their favor lovely little inside break there continuation from lacoste lefel finding the option underneath now continuing towards the far side line where gomez has it wants to sling that one down there or well could only palm it around the corner Love the effort, but Absolutely. just came up empty. Like the effort, not sure I like the idea. That's a really hard channel to hit when Ruel is that close to you and that close to the sideline. The earlier one that they hit was more of a lead pass. That one just a little bit too hasty after they played so nicely up to the end zone. The spacing from Frisco was really nice at that point. They managed to get out of each other's way and allow that cascading flow down the pitch. So pinned on from that front cone, Von Stept provides the underneath option. Herkins wants to clear through and I think might now continue to take off deep. Inside shot is a little out of reach of Scala. So Frisco will have their blushes spared and will get the disc back. So about seven minutes left of regulation time to Try and overcome this five-point deficit. But it all starts with this. So just back in play. Swung into the centre. Poaching off to get the block there is Kay, but maybe got a little bit of contact on the way through. 
Well, an uncontested foul. Great effort from Phil K trying to sneak that one away. But just a bit too much touch on the arm. But hey, to be fair, the amount of speed he came through with, managing to avoid any sort of other bodily contact is no mean feat. There, of course, is going to leave a poach wide open. But instead, they find the option underneath. Yeah, shocked that Friesgoes didn't just try and massively overload the deep, but the error is going to come from hot defensive pressure for Flora Scala. Excellently mar well, mar marking out the reset. Put my teeth back in. Ah, I found updated roster numbers for Friesco. So uh, we might have been uh, misnaming a few people, and we apologise for that, as this one is going to be ripped into the end zone. And Herkins is right there. The put was bang on the money from uh, from the thrower and almost unstoppable. Another break for Jogo Benito, 11-5. I think that's uh, K maybe with the put. He is indeed. Well, regardless, it's going to be good for the next point. And Jogo Benito within two of the point cap win. I did enjoy seeing uh, Philip K after that attempt at the run-through block. So we can get another look at that fantastic defense from Jogo Benito's female matching in the hand of set. But uh, he came and had a little just a uh, moment with the uh, player he'd caught just the arm of as he tried to get that run-through deer. Just checking in with her, seeing if she was okay, which is all, always part of, well, spirited play just to make sure that when a collisions do occur, because of course no one intends for these things to happen, this is a non-contact sport. But Olivier just there, catching a little bit of his arm and just making sure she's okay. She's got the word forget written on the back of her shirt, so hopefully she has a short memory, is able to play on with no fear. This one ripped deep. I was trying to get the inside out edge on it, but just continued to blow it away in Bertrand. Not able to catch up to it. Yeah, another matchup against Anna Gurner. Really enjoying watching Bertrand play. She's uh, from La Rochelle. Started playing at school. Taking the poach swing available. Laying to out to the ground is bus off and securing the disc as well. Upline cut goes. Holstering on that occasion. Now swung back to Bussoff. Gurner comes underneath, lays out once again. Here's the deep look. Chesky's got a little bit of separation, but just couldn't quite get the pace needed. Yeah, Gurwich not knowing the speed of Chesky on sand. I was just thinking in my head, Benji, actually, before she went to the end zone, she was encouraged by the sideline to cut deep and did have the separation from her defender, but it's quite fun to see what she does on a team where she doesn't have to be the best player on the field, doesn't have to be always involved with the offensive opportunities, because when she plays for Cusp Shout, occasionally she becomes such a key part. So see what she can do with sort of, you know, an extra cog to the machine rather than a driving force. Trostar swinging towards Imiz on the far side. Nice switching on the defence. Lacoste Lefebvre back to Trostar. You can hear the uh, calls of the uh, Jogo Benito players on the sideline, maybe switching the forces around. Ah, oh, it's... Does it like it's going to be a force out? Scuba over the top, back into Trostar's hands. Priu executed that one well. This one, comfortable for Remis. Gurna bids, but is a hair too late. Bertrand cannot take advantage, though. Gurna gets back into position. That one low. Swan Lacoste Lefebvre still secures it. Everything looking very static downfield. Activates the dump. Goes back to Tristar. There's the inside channel opened through. Caught the continuation. Plucked out of the air by Bertrand for 11-6.
Well, that was a slightly uncomfortable little piece of offense right at the end there for Freeze Go, but what a ripper out of the air for that final scoring pass. Not the biggest player on the field is the wonderful number 13 for Freeze Go, Juliette Baton, but heck and grab. And the lesser seen outside shoulder layout attempt from Anna Gurner earlier on in this point. Just got to congratulate her on her excellent body control, managing not to steamroll as Julia Bertrand when she was trying to go over that slightly riskier side. In the other quarterfinals in the mixed division, uh, Chak up 9-8 on AKS Zlai. B-Fire leads Kuzpadova 7-6 in an all-Italian affair. And the other quarterfinal is all Spanish with Guayota up 9-3 on Barcelona Sharks. Well, Coyota looked real good yesterday on the live stream, but I'd heard really good things about Barcelona Sharks. Shame to see both Spanish teams knocked out. Not bad, no, sorry, one of. <laughs> knocking each other out, even. On Stebert. To Gaffney, who spanners it. I'd put that tool back in the box if I were him. going with the backwards cap, which, to be honest, I'm not sure what, what use that's really providing him in this sunlight. Defence from sweat. But the whistle for time goes, so it's going to be applying cap after this point finishes. Reset back to Bertrand. Communication from the sideline, trying to help them out defensively. Blue L. Underneath option is Olivier. Olivier oh. trying to find Rouillet as the reset, but sticky enough pressure to stop it. Oh no, Scala got the hand there and hit the disc away. Oh, she does. Great, great effort to try and recover. Mikhail Pala unable to make the secondary bid successfully, but she did touch the disc, so it was close. Coming back as the reset is Gaffney in the swing to Von Stepp. It's a little bit behind Gurner. He's got the uh, headband colour coordinated with the undershorts. Gaffney with a high release back to Gurner. Plucking it out with the right hand, continuing with the force on the floor and using the brake slide flow to punch in to Phil K for the score 12 6. One away from the win. Well, it's still a game to 13, regardless. But I think it's going to be Yogo Benito who are going to come out the victors of this. I really don't see them shutting down their opponents for a full six stretch. Although not looking infallible, especially with that drop just to start off that offense, really. And a golden opportunity with such a short field for Frisco to do it. But the pressure being applied on the handlers on defense for both sides is very impressive in this game. So this could be the last point if Jogo Benito get the break. Obviously, Freeze Go will be trying to stop that. Had a three point run at the end of their last game to come down from 12 10 to beat Urubro 13 12, the French. But uh, seven on the bounce against this Jogo Benito team seems a lot more unlikely. Yeah, I can't help but feel like that was just the doom of Freeze Go, spending all that energy on advancing themselves to this quarterfinal stage, which you have to do, like you can't blame them for it, apart from maybe, you know, taking that deficit in the first place. But they looked so much better in this second half than they did the first, where they had that six on the bounce for Yogo. Nice break there from Parla, downfield. For a start. Popping it off to Priyu. Working it around the back nicely. Here's Parla. Again, just being calm on this offense here, Freeze Go. Lacoste Lefebvre. Simple underneath to Parla. Flicks that out quickly to Trustar. 
to start floating across the end zone for the score to clear Montpellier. Going into this game, Cedric Trastar had the fewest stats of anyone on the team, but he has been on point in this contest. My question is, Benji, where was this level of play at the beginning of the game for freeze goes? Well, they came out strong, remember? Broke on the first point. But yes. You get my point though. Where was this? There's a long the stretch of the first half where they just did not look at it at all. New. It's like Jogo Benito had sort of squirreled themselves inside their minds of Freeze Go. Like some sort of parasitic alien near dystopian future type scenario. But it is nice to see them coming back to form. It might be probably is a little bit too late, but hopefully they can find some rest. Maybe some restorative beverages out here on the sands in Portimao and come out stronger as they then try and fight for fifth. Which, to be fair, is no disgrace. Being fifth in Europe on beach, pretty darn good. Especially in such a hotly contested division as Mixed has been. Emphasis on hotly, by the way, with the weather today. Hot, hot, hot. Here's Phil Kay. Von Stebert, here's Bussoff. Goes for the offhand, backhand, a nice reaching grab there, high from Kay, hammering for the victory as well. And losing footing slightly, but sticking the catch. 13-7, Jogo Benito, your final score. Oh, who else underneath it but Flora Scarlett. She has been cleaning up in the end zone for her team, redeeming some very adventurous biscuits indeed but that's it for this one well done freeze goes for getting yourself and surmounting that comeback in the end to get to the quarterfinal stages they will indeed be playing for fifth it's not a surprise after that first half but jogo benito will now be fighting it out for the very top in their very stylish outfits so i have to come up with more puns for them so we're moving on to the Open Division, a pre-quarter final for you next up. But in the meantime, this mixed quarter final score is Jogo Benito 13, Freeze Go 7. And on behalf of Hannah Pendlebury and all of our Ulti TV crew, Benjamin Reese saying we'll see you on the other side. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. Okay, now, team. for the sport, for the world. That's why we're making a global showcase, starting in Europe, made in Amsterdam. Ultileague. Ultileague.net.
Merci, chez les taxes. Merci beaucoup. Alti.tv.